Hi guys, thanks for checking out this Radcast Academy YouTube video. This is a follow on from a case we posted on the Radcast Academy Facebook group demonstrating a really important point, which is how to spot when a nasogastric tube is in the wrong place. And basically, we want you to remember one thing. If the NG don't fit, you must not commit. So I'll be showing you how to assess if an NG is in the right place and we'll also look at the correct positioning of endotracheal tubes and central lines because conveniently these were also present on the x-ray we put up. So this is the case and as you can see by far the most important thing going on here is that the nasogastric tube has been wrongly inserted into the patient's airway and so it travels down the trachea and then goes down the right main bronchus into the right lung base where the tip is located. And it's really important that, that this is removed immediately because if any food or medication is passed down this nasogastric tube, then the patient's going to get a lower respiratory tract infection and get sick and possibly die. Um, this will be harm that we have inflicted on the patient, known as an iatrogenic injury, and that's certainly not the aim in medicine. So it's very important that this is recognised and the NG tube is immediately withdrawn. So in order to stop that from happening, this is the checklist that you want to be going through in your head every time you see a chest x-ray with a nasogastric tube on it in order to make sure that it's in the right position. And you want to go through this checklist and you want to be able to say yes to each point in turn. And if you can't say yes to each point, then it probably means that the nasogastric tube is in the wrong place and needs to be recited. So starting at the beginning, the nasogastric tube needs to pass vertically down the midline or near the midline. So it needs to pass more or less down here. It may not be straight in the middle, but more or less in the midline. And this just tells you that it's passing down a vertical midline structure. Hopefully it's the esophagus, but it could well be the trachea at this point, as was the case in the example we put up. And so this is where the next point comes in. Um, and this is perhaps the most important point of the whole checklist. Um, and it's basically, when you reach the carina, which is the point where the trachea divides into your right and left main bronchi, the nasogastric tube needs to continue passing straight past that. Sometimes we call that bisecting the carina, and it shouldn't follow the course of either one of the main bronchi, so it should just continue straight past the carina, like so, not following the course of either of the main bronchi. And that tells you that it's in the esophagus. Then point three is that the nasogastric tube should continue in the midline until it reaches the diaphragm where the gastroesophageal junction is. So again, continuing down the esophagus to the diaphragm and the point where the esophagus turns into the stomach. Here, the nasogastric tube will usually deviate to the left and the tip will be located somewhere in the left upper quadrant within the stomach. And that's a good position and you want the tip to be located at least 10 centimeters beyond the gastroesophageal junction at the diaphragm and that just means that any food and medication that's given to the patient will be dumped nicely into the stomach won't sit around a bit close to the um, esophagus and maybe re re be regurgitated back up so you want the tip to be nice and deeply sited within the stomach one other thing to be aware of is that sometimes the tip may pass beyond the, it may continue down, might be inserted a bit too far or the x-ray may be taken a bit too high and it may continue below the bottom of the x-ray and you may not be able to see the tip. And so in these cases, strictly speaking, you should get another x-ray a bit lower down to make sure you can actually see where the tip is and make sure it's not wandered off anywhere that you don't want it to be like into the duodenum or further down into the bowel. So as long as you can see the tip and you can say yes to all of the other points, then the NG tube is in the right position and safe to use. So here we have a good example of a well-positioned nasogastric tube. And if you go through your checklist, you'll find that you can say yes to each of the five points. So you've got the tube, it starts off in the midline, passing vertically. 
when it reaches the carina, it doesn't follow the course of either the right or the left main bronchus. It just continues straight past or bisects the carina and continues it more or less in the midline until it starts to deviate towards the left when it's reaching the gastroesophageal junction. And then at the gastroesophageal junction, it goes left into the stomach and the tip is located within the stomach at least 10 centimeters away from the gastroesophageal junction. And so this nasogastric tube is in a good position and is safe to use. Another tube seen in our case is an endotracheal tube, and this time it's in the correct position. As the name suggests, endotracheal tubes are meant to lie within the trachea, and they're used when a patient is being ventilated. Um, their position is easier to assess than a nasogastric tube. They simply have to pass down the midline in the trachea, and the tip needs to be located a good distance away from the carina down here where the trachea bifurcates. They normally say that ideally it should be five to seven centimeters away from the carina. And that's all there is to assess in terms of their position. The reason that you don't want your endotracheal tube to be too low is that it can go beyond the carina and into the right or left main bronchus and that's called endobronchial intubation. And when that happens, it means you only supply one lung with air, and so the other lung collapses, which is what's happened here. So the endotracheal tube has gone down too far, it's gone into the right main bronchus, only the right lung is ventilated, and the left lung has collapsed. So what you'd have to do in this case, again, it's an emergency, you'd have to call up the team immediately, let them know so that they can withdraw the endotracheal tube, move it so it's the ideal five to seven centimetres away from the carina, and so both lungs can be nicely ventilated. Um, you'll also notice on this x-ray that this nasogastric tube, the tip is only located a few centimetres away from the gastroesophageal junction at the diaphragm, so that also needs to be inserted further into the stomach. The last type of line I'm going to talk about is a central line or a central venous catheter. And these are lines which lie in large veins. They're often inserted into the neck or in the arm on either side. So they can be inserted into, into the right internal jugular vein via the right side of the neck or the left internal jugular vein or via the right arm into the right subclavian vein or the left arm via the left subclavian vein. And usually you want the tip to lie within the SVC, or the, which is the superior vena cava. You can't actually see the superior vena cava on an X-ray, so you have to use other structures that you can see as a guide. So the SVC runs along the right side of the mediastinum, pretty much to the right of the trachea. So you basically use the trachea as a guide and within the superior vena cava, the ideal position is at the level of the carina, so the bifurcation of the, of the trachea, so around here. But it's not an exact science, and anywhere sort of in this area is a reasonable position for the tip of a central line to lie. So in our case, the patient actually has a left-sided pick line which stands for peripherally inserted central venous catheter, which just means that the line has been inserted into a peripheral vein in the patient's left arm and then being passed centrally. But the same principles still apply in terms of where you want the tip to be. You want the tip to be in the superior vena cava region. So the line comes in through the left side it will pass through the axillary vein into the left subclavian vein. It will pass through the left subclavian vein and then cross to the right side of the patient's chest through the brachiocephalic vein and then into the superior vena cava. Now this line actually passes quite down inferiorly through the SVC and the tip is located more probably at the junction between the SVC and the right atrium of the heart and that's called the cavo atrial junction. And that's a perfectly fine place for a central line or a pick to have the tip resting. 
So it's just anywhere in the general area of the SVC or the cave area at your junction is fine for a central line to lie. So here is another example of a left sided pick. So you can see here the line will be in the patient's left arm. It passes through the left axilla in the left axillary vein and then into the left subclavian vein, continues through there and then it goes into the brachiocephalic vein, across to the right side of the patient's medius line and into the SVC. And in this case, the tip is lying in the SVC just below the carina. So that's in the SVC. But again, that's a perfectly reasonable location for the tip to be. So that's the three lines and tubes covered that are in our case. Hopefully you found that useful. And remember, if the NG don't fit, you must not commit. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell so you can stay up to date with all of our videos. Also, make sure you check out our other social media channels, including the Radcast Academy Facebook group, where this case came from, for lots more cases and teaching and general radiology chit chat. Bye.